Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to our May 13th, 2015 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, call this meeting to order. Uh, we'll have approval of minutes for May 7th, 2015. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll have payroll 91 and warrants 48S, 48A, and 48. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> So we have uh, seven o'clock right on the dot. Welcome to V1 um, Vodka events and discussion. Mr. Paul. Paul, uh, can you want to share us on um, what you've done since our last meeting? Have you met with the building inspector, fire, police, anybody? Well, I guess I, I want to start from the beginning. I think. The last meeting, uh, things were a little bit misconstrued about my intentions for the parking, and you know there was con some construct uh, talk about events and the frequency of them. Um, you know, for the year that I've been there, you know that's in the amount of parking I need. That's you know 99 percent of the time, you know what I need for that space. One of the reasons I bought the space is because it was really a kind of a single use space for a small business that just had one or two salespeople and, and such. Um, so just like any business, you have anniversaries, you have special occasions where there might be some more need for parking. And um, so whether it's a handful of times or what have you, um, obviously um, want to be a good neighbor. Hopefully Valley Black and D1 has been a good neighbor for close to a decade and have the and, uh, you know, I, the times that I would use it, I would make sure that it was empty. And, um, again, what I started off by saying last time was that I did watch that property for close to 10 years. And the times where I would need it, um, it's empty. So, um, <clears throat> I The parking lots are empty, right? You're talking about? Yeah. Them? Okay. Yep. So, um, I did have Tim come out and inspect the property. And, um make the necessary changes already in terms of the fire exits and the lighting and such. Had that done and we'll be getting the um, IBS security will be coming out and doing the fire alarm and the uh, regular alarm upgrades in the next week. And uh, after that point, Tim said he would approve it for um, not only in a business, um, but for assembly, which it was for close to 100 years. and. Um, so, what would be the capacity that would that be determined by Tim? I mean, based on only having one bathroom and, and keeping it again, these these are events that I do plan on have uh, uh, on doing will be private, invitation only uh, for my customers, um, and um, I would keep it under 100 because I don't want to have to deal with that. I'm not. I'm in the brand building business. I'm not in the I have 400 restaurants and 600 liquor stores that that's not my intention to, uh, to sell drinks or, I mean, okay, again, I'm not the one against the law for a brand owner to do those things, so um, I would keep it under 100. When I went in there, there was a, so, several upgrades that we discussed. The 100 is that magic number that we all talk about with regard to assemblies and nightclubs and everything else. So we discussed what he was going to do. Again, it's private. It was, and he discussed it with me with regard to just these special events, if you concur, but it would stay at 99, the maximum number allowed based on the liquor use. And uh, certainly without, with the church totally open, 99 is, is certainly a, more than, is a, is a number that certainly the building can hold. And because it's, it's a, a private thing, we, we can waive the requirements of the bathroom. He's not going to be collecting money, he's not, um, and it's just private. It's just like a big party at your uh, one of our houses, and it's just at his business. So the big issue was and is is parking. 
So, so it didn't ever fall out of the realm of the what the planning board's purview would be of that with the building. This is just this this would be a, a different scope of an assembly, like it, like you said. Yeah, this is a special use. It's mm -hmm. a very occasional use, and it's, but it's something that needs to be addressed with with this board relative to the parking and where that might happen. Certainly, it, and Paul knows that uh, he's aware that there are other events going on around him, and and, uh, and that's what the discussion will be about. And it's, again, it's per, per event that he has, he has to come back every single time that he's just, he, he is. Uh, so he needs to get this. full approval from the fire chief. Yeah, we will. Once that's all into yes. place. Okay. And yeah, he has to do some upgrades to the, the alarm system. We went through everything. He knows what he needs to do. He has in to fact, have the In fact, IBS has been talking to the fire chief and everything on this checklist. I think Madam Chair is more concerned about making sure everybody's in the loop so that it doesn't mm -hmm. interfere with other events mm -hmm. that, are, that are going to be going on. I think we found out about a Girl Scout one, which is a bit of a conflict mm -hmm. regard to one of the dates that you had presented before. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm just trying to get a feel for how many times we can anticipate this to happen in a year. Yeah. I mean, a handful of the Max. What's that? How, what is that number? Five. Five a year? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I would also bring up the fact that what it was used for over 90 years, uh, I estimate there's over 150 times a year that that parking lot was used by something else other than town use, which, you know, long before my years here, unfortunately, I wish I was born here, but... But Paul, wasn't uh, that a school back then? I don't know what it was. It was, it was a school, so, so the school day ended and right. it was very predictable at 3 30 on friday everybody was out of there so when so, church services were held on saturdays and sundays so I mean, that there's been a complete change of use of the uh, of the um, hooker school right so, so that's exactly what i'm saying is in the 10 years i watched the property the mm -hmm. times when i would in my mind envision me having events on saturday nights mm -hmm. and working there many saturday nights it's a ghost town there so <clears throat> the times when I would need it is really the times when the library and the senior center, and again, hopefully being a good, a positive business uh, in the town for 10 years, you know, the courtesy of making sure that that place was empty, because I don't want people that come to visit not have a place to park. So it just makes sense to make sure that, you know, we get along because the three of us over there are this close quarters. Right. But that's why I think, you know, we're saying it have to be, truly would have to come back each and every time for approval. I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't be in favor of doing any sort of blanket approval for that reason. Well, um, I would like you to have conversation, and I think certainly right. the library can, can yeah, what do you I'm, have? Yeah, I'm here from the library, and uh, we talked about it last night. We, uh, you know, were here last week and heard the proposal, and, um, you know, we didn't know what had transpired um, between the select board and the easement and what had happened, you know, from a few months ago when um, this was all brought up before. And we just um, feel, again, it should be, we agree, maybe a case-by-case -case, um, basis after that V1, if you check in with the affected entities, including the library, um, you know, maybe two weeks in advance so that it's on the calendar. Um, you know, and that there's no conflicts. Because as we found out, we were talking about the Girl Scout event, which nobody in town would know about except for um, the Council of Aging, Susan. She should, you know, knew about it in Park and Rec. They got permission because of the field use. And there's some events from Park and Rec and Senior Center, and occasionally we have events, but um, usually our events are during our hours, which are very predictable. Um, and set, um, but I just, as a courtesy of everybody in, in the, all the departments, I think mm -hmm. that's something that we would agree upon. If it's you know an event, they have a date, you know, check with those entities. So that I think it just needs to have a process. I don't know who it would go to. I mean, obviously coming here to the select board, but then as far as the calendar and what else is happening in town, I don't know. That's up to 
Okay. Joyce, if it's okay, what I'd like to do, I can work with Paul. We can come up with a form where you know he can spell out certain specifics, what he's going to do, what time, what the um, uh, number of people it is, the day, and everything. And then we'll go. We'll have some places that he'll get a sign off from, like the senior center, park and rec. I think those are the three things. The senior library. center, park and rec, and library. I, I, you're and so then bring it to you. Even capable, I mean, it's and right. it shouldn't be a that thing. can be the start of the process with you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Right, I think Just like we do sense. with with building, fire, with and police. Town, you know, town, uh, when that town. comes to us, mm -hmm. we know that he's contacted everyone, and and there's no town problem. common. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we, we have That's the same the type of thing. Yes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We can do I think as long as the, the key word is communicate, mm -hmm. right. it always is, you know, no matter what between departments and, you know, and certainly that has been in town. Squeaky, so. We appreciate yeah. you do have the business here in town. We want to make it so that it's good for you too, as well as is for our other departments. So, what about liability? Just where does that fall? Well, liability. Somebody is falls that's at one of your parties and falls on town property. Where are we with that? Uh, the, um, the liability would be on uh, on the business uh, for. That's all I need to know. Yeah. And, and that was my big concern the last time we met. We can't really legally give him an easement serving alcohol as a business or as a salesperson to go on town property. Uh, I mean, he's not that's, selling. You can, not you can selling. whether you want to. It's another matter. But an easement yeah. is a possibility. It's just opening us up to a, a real big liability. But he's not selling liquor. Or serving any. Well, they can have a taste. It's like anything yeah. else. It's on his property. It's like anybody else that has a drink someplace else and they walk through our property. Yeah. They can walk through our schoolyard or anything and else and still fall, trip yeah. and fall. So, I mean, it, it's not necessarily. No, but uh, originally him. our conversation back in November was you, you, know, you wanted a designated. We had one last that. week when you weren't here. Yeah. So he was here last week. Oh. So, this is an update so, okay. to what. Our conversation. So he was has last an easement week. now? No, no, we did not okay. do an easement. We're He's just talking about happen. events. So. so I'll work with Paul. We'll that sounds. All those. Yeah. Make them I'd like to make a motion uh, to allow Paul to have to set up a system where he gets the buy off from. Let me talk slower. No, I got it. Okay, I apologize. Where Paul gets a buy-in from uh, the other entities that are involved from the town, brings it before the select board, and, and we authorize him to have uh, a few handful of events a year. It's my motion. All right, I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Come see us when you have your first date. Thanks, Karen. Thank you. I'm going to go out of order here just for a minute. Can we do the asparagus festival first? That would be fine with you? Are you here for a certain reason? Well, Excuse we're me. There for the, the three of us are here for all the Okay. Reasons. Can we just do asparagus and then would that be okay with you? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, welcome. Thank you. Um, I, we're here tonight uh, because I submitted an application for one day license so that we can serve uh, craft beer um, and a junior libation at a ticketed, uh, an event that WGBY is holding at these various festivals. Um, I've been working with uh, public safety um, and um, with the Mass Massachusetts Department of um, Agricultural Resources. Um, the event is going to be designated an agricultural event. And um, we will be serving, it's a tasting event, so we'll be serving small pours from craft brewers. Um, as in other years, um, we are getting um, certificates of insurance and service from each of our vendors. Um, and uh, WGBY has uh, the, the insurance, overall insurance for the event. And we are responsible, WGBY staff will be responsible for checking IDs and making sure that, um, um, that that's in, in place. Are you having a separate area for it's the It's definitely a separate area. It's in a big tent. Okay. It's in a closed tent. Um, and so anyone who wants to go in will have to. We have a, a double a double safeguard this year. 
um, you have to get you have to get checked for your age, and then you'll get a special stamp, um, and that will tell people that you can be served. And then you'll also be required um, to present a coupon. We're selling asparagus coupons, um, festival coupons. You'll have to present a coupon to get that for. Um, so there's sort of a double double control there in place. Motion to allow. Second. Wait, discussion. Any other discussion? So I got a telephone call from one of your vendors, a uh, vineyard out of uh, Southampton. Yes, Black Birch Vineyard. She was very concerned about uh, not having the proper permits in place. Apparently, she has a state license for farmer vintner. Uh, she has a state license for what? Farmer vintner. So she grows her own wine uh, and serves it at uh, and and sells it at. Uh, at farmers, farmers market, and she's got a booth there. She's going to be doing little taste samples, which I don't think falls under any of our uh, licenses that we have locally. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Yes, I, David, I've been working with her, her Mary Hamill, the Hamels, and so that's why we went to the state the Department of Agricultural because mm -hmm. the vineyard does fall within the farm um, designation, farm goods red designation, and, and of course, as we know, beer does not. Um, so she's getting a license, she's getting permission from the state. Um, um, and so I had asked her, you know, do you want to, want to put you in the same tent so that you fall within our license? So we can, we'll certainly discuss those Okay, two if options. you could work with her to make sure that's yeah. going to work out. But there's no additional license that I'm aware of that we have that she would need to procure. Uh, my understanding is, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, my understanding is, is if she is designated as a farm produce, mm -hmm. That it, she has, and, and the event itself is designated by the Commonwealth as an agricultural event, an official agricultural event, then she can sell at the market, at mm -hmm. the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So we've taken that step to have it designated an agricultural event. And this is a right to farm uh, community, so I don't think that there would be any interference. Shocking, it would yeah. be. Yeah. Any second and fourth? Any Wait, wait, I did want to tell you, as, as far as the general use of the, of the common is concerned, when I first came before you earlier this year, I uh, in, uh, intimated that we were going to do all of the activities on the south side of the common. Mm -hmm. Since that point, we've moved the luncheon back over to where it was last year, where the dinner was. So that event is still taking place on the north side. I just want to mention it. Is that was a change from the original. So now we're going to use both sides of the common. Yes, but but you know I've met with I've met with the police department, um, um, and we're taking extra steps to make sure that we help control traffic, and um, we're actually paying to make sure there's enough staff there to make sure people cross safely as well. Okay. So are you going to have police on duty? Yes, we have police on duty. Okay. Yes. yes. And that's all been set with. That's all been set up, and we have actually have a logistics meeting tomorrow morning. Um, with um, the fire chief and police chief, and I don't know, are you, are you coming to? Yes, so to go over those logistics and make sure that we've got the plan buttoned up. So thank you. Okay, okay all in favor? Aye. 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 Would you like to do a plug for when and where? Well, the festival is Saturday, June 6th on the Hadley Common, and I hope you'll all come out and join us this year, as well as a market and food and music. We'll have more um, asparagus-themed activities, including games that are uh, designed for children to uh, celebrate the heritage and history of agriculture in Hadley. So thank you, and come out and think about joining the luncheon. Uh, information is available at wgby.org. Thank you. And the hours? 10 to 5. 10 to 5. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Uh, Laurel Road and Holly Road acceptance process planning for a special town meeting. Um, I guess we're here this evening to say that we're looking towards putting this on the fall town meeting. Um, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done right. before that happens. Would it be helpful if I summarized where we are? Okay, so we have two roads that are being contemplated for acceptance by the town. Laurel Drive and Holly Road. Uh, since you're here from Holly Road, let's address that first. Uh, we met with the residents of Holly Road a couple of times. Uh, we did some homework and I got in touch with Mr. Barry Roberts who has been able to provide for us a legal description of the meets and bounds of the road 
and has prepared papers for the town to uh, acquire the property. Uh, now when we say acquire the property, there, there are two levels of meaning there. There's physically owning the level and then uh, physically owning the property and then there's use of the property as a public way. Those are two separate legal processes just to make things a little complicated, but we can handle all of this as we go along. I have um, the select board scheduled on your June 3rd meeting to take a formal vote of your intention to lay out Holly Road as a, as a public way. From there, a letter gets sent to the planning board and the planning board will have 45 days to comment on it. We'll see what the nature of the comments, after which the select board will hold a hearing uh, probably at the site with notice. So we're talking about a process uh, that will normally take two months to unfold. So by the end of July, we should have a, this pretty much in place for a town meeting vote. Uh, we are being asked to accept a road that has not been improved or in normal practices to accept roads only after they've been up, brought up to the condition that were, were in place at the time of the road's creation. Uh, Mr. Klamowski and I were talking about different funding on mechanisms by which we could uh, accept the road first and then using grant money or some other kind of funding strategy bring the road up to uh, up to the speed. Do we still have in our, um, are we still town land, a building lot there? There is, uh, there, uh, there is a 4.4 acre lot which currently houses a sewer pump station. That lot could be divided and I am informed um, that one of those lots could be sold whether it meets all the zoning regulations for frontage and wetlands concerns, I can't tell you at this point. Is that going to be able to be available for town meeting at the time also? We could make it happen. Would we need to authorize a survey and all of that? Yes, and we'd have to go through what's called the A&R process, approval not required of the planning board. We'd have to physically split, legally split the, uh, the, the parcel into two halves. We have three other roads that are in the vicinity down there. We have, well, not in the vicinity, but Birch Meadow, Bayberry, and Gooseberry mm -hmm. are at this point in time not been accepted either. Correct. Does it not make sense to, to include these and get this off our desk once and for all? We have not been approached by anybody on those three properties. Uh, it makes sense to me to take a global look at properties, uh, roads in town, to see which ones make sense for us to adopt as public ways and which ones should remain as uh, private ways. So the owners of the houses on those streets own the road? The developer. Uh, in some cases it's the developer, in some cases it'll be the property owners, depending on the history of, of the development. So at this point in time, Barry Roberts owns Holly Road? At this point of time, a corporation uh, owns the road and Barry Roberts is its agent. Who's the corporation? His uh, father? I believe it. I'm not sure of the family history, but I believe so, yes. And the residents have approached us, or, the, or Mr. Roberts has? The, the residents have approached us first, and Mr. Roberts has been co very cooperative. Okay. Very helpful. To Jerry's point, um, I know from conversations with individual planning board members that the planning board is also thinking that this is a good opportunity to take a look at some of these roads. Would it make sense for us to reach out to the chair of the planning board and maybe after they've had a chance to vet some of those other projects, come and kind of maybe recommend a plan to us? or Because I agree, I mean, it seems to make sense to try to bundle this and have a have a game plan whether it's all done this year or over the two-year period? The problem was originally when they were built, some were built to specifications to be accepted and other ones were built as private roads, you know, and those, those will never be accepted. So whether you research them all or not, I, I mean, it's a start. I mean, look, look at our own property here. We, we have to survey our own property. We don't even know where the pins are. Okay. Uh, there, there's a lot of issues with town property in town you know, right now at this point. And, and we need to address them all eventually down the road here. 
So where we are with Laurel uh, uh, Drive is that uh, back in March 20th, the select board took a vote to, of their intention to lay out Laurel Drive. A uh, letter went to the planning board. The planning board has 45 days to respond. We have not received a response in the 45 days have elapsed. So we are in a position of the select board deciding whether they want to continue with this uh, project. I know that there's been some work that, that you've asked for uh, with respect to the underground utilities, yes, which have not been completed. They still have to find some water services, some water boxes, make sure that they operate, make sure that they're flush with the surface so we can get at them if we need them in an emergency situation. Catch basins we looked at already, Check, took the covers off to make sure that they're not decayed or corroded. <coughs> And the condition of the road itself, which they just resurfaced it. Uh, they put up a street sign. Is that Laurel? This is Laurel, yes. Yeah. On all, Holly's uh, totally separate. Holly, I have two different scenarios to try to fix that road with two different prices to fix that road. One of them is uh, 52000 and one is $78,000. But you would have Laurel. to do the same thing on Holly Road and finding the water and so on and so water forth to each house. And all the catch basins and all the infrastructure has to be checked, yes. I think most of Holly Road is marked. I don't think it's going to be as hard to find, no, I don't think it is find the utilities on Holly as it is on Laurel. Yeah. Laurel's a little bit older street. 52 and 78 you said? 52,000, 52,000, yes, 650 and 78,000, 278. Okay. And I think you said in a conversation to me that really to do it properly, we're looking at the higher number. Yeah, okay. To, yeah. to reclaim it and then repave it. Do we know why the planning board didn't respond? No. Did Has anybody uh, done any more research on, on the easement that the town did have? No, we looked, and the only thing that we could find is that easement that runs down the road for that sewer line that was put in. How many feet was that? How many what? How many feet was that? 20 foot, 20 foot easement, I believe, in the center of the road. There's also an easement that comes in from the west for yeah. the electrical service right. for the pump station. From mm -hmm. the uh, pump station. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, the vote on June 3rd, are, are there outstanding questions now that, what are the outstanding questions that the select board would be discussing on June 3rd? Probably how it would be paid for, whether it was done by betterment or by a grant that would be approached or Chapter 90 monies. Okay. I, I, always, under, I always thought it was a two-part process that first you vote on whether to accept the road and then, then you go into the process of how repair would be made. It's actually the town that has to accept the road on town meeting floor. Uh, right, but you recommend the acceptance or I, I forget that. We bring it to town meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but then the first person that stood up on town meeting floor would say, How how's this getting <laughs> rectified? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, having our ducks lined up would be the most appropriate thing to have. Well, and, and then being only 20 foot easement on that street right now, you're going to have to determine whether you're going to bring it up to the new road with specifications or not. Which I assume is what the $78,000. Uh, subdivisions of that nature, <coughs> per se, let's say Wampanoag Drive, that wasn't built up to standards. The planning board made agreement with the person that owned it to reclaim the road, to repave the road, to fix the catch basins, to pave the gutters, and then to bring it to town meeting because the standards back then aren't what they are now yeah. for that. Yeah, but with only a 20-foot easement, you'd need at least a... Well, we'd have to have the whole thing yeah. all the way on people's lawns, just yeah. like we do on other roads. Surveyed and surveyed out and stoned and found it. I, mean, I, I would like to pursue the acreage on Holly Road mm -hmm. and find out, you know, how viable that is for us to sell it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's so an asset, we can pay. convert to a use. <clears throat> It's awful hard to get that mowed, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's kind of a wet, soaking wet down there. Wet area. There's a ditch that runs through it down there. Actually, Dave, you were with. I bet you the neighbors could attest to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wet. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't mean it's not buildable. It just could be problematic. But I, I, even if it wasn't buildable, it doesn't mean it's not sellable. If the neighbor that owns the property next to it may be interested. All you need is a willing buyer. So, yeah. Okay. All right. 
so we'll put that on the agenda. Um, so we're off. So are you want to just leave those two roads on, or you want to continue looking into the other? I think for right now, until the other people have approached us, that we lost one for now, and that's it. I, I'd like to stay in touch with the planning board on that, though. Yeah, uh -huh. I couldn't agree more. In concert with them. Yeah. Well, if they would respond on this one, that would be helpful. Helpful, and then we could know where to go on the others. So on June 3rd, you'll be taking a vote of your intention to lay out Holly Road. That will trigger the correspondence to the planning board. On for Laurel Drive, <coughs> since we have not heard from the planning board, we can then take the next step, which is to hold a public hearing on Laurel Drive. So, Could we send a letter to the chairman and ask if they could resolve that at their next meeting? Yes, but uh, as, a, as, a, as a legal issue, you are now free to act without the recommendation. Okay. If you wish to have the recommendation, that's that's entirely appropriate. But I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Again, just to clarify, because I'm, I'm not quite getting this yet. You can vote on June 3rd your intention to move this process forward, even if the funding isn't totally nailed down at that point, correct? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we could take a vote. Yeah. Okay, and so that's the vote that would be taken. It's just your intention to move forward with it. But the yeah. more information that we have and the we, more we the plan is gelled, the more likely we are to be confident in our vote. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, we really Go didn't ahead. have enough information in the last couple of meetings <coughs> we had. You know, you were, you were in requesting and we were we had, we had more questions than answers at the time. Yeah. So now that we're doing a little bit more research on it, and you're getting a few more facts together. Yeah. It, it's it's coming it's coming a little bit closer to for us to make a decision on, on what we're going to do with it. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. June third. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to meet with you and talk about this. But we're mm -hmm. off to the races. Good. And the, the legal, it sounds like the legal part with Mr. Roberts is kind of, has fallen into place. It, that's a very good piece of uh, the puzzle to have in, in the picture at yeah. this point. Okay. All set. And we'll move on to, um, we have a building committee tonight that would like to. Is there anything else about Laurel? I don't need to, is there anything else about Laurel we need to discuss now? Uh, I don't think so, other than uh, I've given to share the proposed countdown schedule for the special town meeting. Uh, have you scheduled to open the warrant on July 1st with the closure date of towards the end of August and a town meeting for October 22nd? I saw them both listed. I didn't know if there was anything else needed to be discussed. Thank you. So. Okay. Mike, did you want? On Laurel Drive, of course, there's still the outstanding issues about the water services, finding them. The planning board asked me to submit a letter to them, you know, recommending that from the DPW that this be accepted by the town of Hadley. I have not done that letter. I have it, but I have not submitted it because we do not still have a complete set of plans, mm -hmm. record plans. Randy was out there looking for water services, looking for boundaries. There's still a few mystery ones. There's that some that some, someone's checking on now. Yes. So. <coughs> so that may not be ready by June 3rd? They've been working pretty hard to find all that, to bring it up to snuff. I would say they probably will have it by then, because they've been working on it since early spring on a lot of these projects to get them completed so that they can put it on their record plan so that we can have it so that when we need it in the middle of the night to find the word services, you know, where to go. Did the planning board have any conversation with you regarding Holly Road? The only conversation was is that they need a letter from the DPW stating that they, yes, approve this road to be accepted. So they may be waiting on that letter. Right. It may be our answer. Right. And I can't submit it until I get the set of record plans. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for giving us the time to come in and uh, speak to you. I, I did send out an uh, email this afternoon. I apologize. I don't have everybody's email. And I don't know who actually was able to see it. 
Um, the only thing that we wanted to bring up tonight was the the uh, metal roof issue, and if we or your board would um, allow us to make some changes relative to the DPW uh, metal roof portion of it being required or not required to be under DCAM certification. Now, um, we've been going back and forth a little bit on this. DCAM is a uh, requirement on any project that's over $100,000. Our estimate on it through our sources have been $90,000. So there's three roofs at this point in time, correct? correct? Town the, Hall, uh, Senior Center, and, 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 and DPW and Public Safety. Public Safety, public safety is certainly over $100,000. Okay. We know that. So that's DCAM. That has to go on DCAM uh, certified. This building, the Town Hall, our estimate was the $65,000. So that, right now, as the uh, uh, specs and the um, RP is, is that it does not need certification on the DCAM. The issue is with the DPW grudge. So um, our hope is that you that you will go along with our our request to take out DCAM certification requirements for that roof since our estimate is at ninety thousand dollars. Where did you get the estimate from? We got it from a local um, certified roof of the gentleman that did the seniors, um, senior center roof. And how were you happy with his services? Very. And he came in on budget? Came in at budget, yes. And he told you that he would be able to do that roof for less than 100000 I don't need to know what the yes. number was. He said less than. So DCAM doesn't actually pertain to it since it falls underneath the levy. Correct. Well, your estimate's 90, you said, so. Yes, right. the estimate is 90. It's, it's way under. under. Yeah. yeah. Well, he stayed with, within his uh, quote on the senior center roof, and he did a nice job on that. I wouldn't see why, why you wouldn't want to stay with him. Is it a recommendation of the entire committee that we accept that? Yes, yes, it is. So, here's the, we should hear from our procurement officers to why felt that that might not be a prudent action before we decide. Okay, so so a little bit of history. Uh, we prepared the, uh, the, the bid documents on March 28th. I uh, approached the select board to ask, uh, how shall we do this at town meeting? If you recall, we talked about doing this as a package, as a bundle. Uh, there was some uh, recommendation that came from the committee that we should do these as separate projects. Select board felt that we should do this as a bundle. So the original bid documents went out for three roofs, uh, totaling three hundred and five thousand dollars. Estimated clearly, DCAM certification would be necessary for one GC to handle the entire uh, th uh, project. Did we understand at that point in time that breaking them out would offer a substantial savings on two of the projects and would qualify to not be DCAM certified? Was the select board made aware at that time? At that time, they were. Okay. All right. But we did not know that. Okay. And certainly, our so there, there's more. So the uh, the bids went out. We had our pre-bid conference. Some technical questions came up. Quite a few technical questions, which needed to be addressed as an addendum. So addendum number one was issued. Uh, that addressed the technical is, uh, issues and pushed back the bid deadline two weeks, which is now currently May 19th at 2 p.m. Uh, the, the committee uh, approached the, uh, the select board again, or the chair of the select board, and it was uh, decided that uh, a menu approach would be a more uh, favorable way of uh, dealing with this. So, a general contractor could bid on one, two, or three roofs. And clearly the town hall, at being the estimate at $65,000, would not require DCAM certification. So an addendum number two was issued that 
to that effect that bidders could choose one roof, two roofs, three roofs, and if you chose to uh, uh, work on the town hall alone, then a DCAM certification would not be required. No change in the date was uh, made, and so again, May 19th at 2 p.m. is the uh, is the target deadline. The issue with the roof at the DPW is that uh, the bid, the governing bid requirements are driven by what you think your high estimate is going to be, not what the low bid is going to be, which is a bit of a crystal ball gazing exercise because you don't much know what you're going to get. But if your estimate is 90,000, then taking a 10% deviation one way or the other puts you into very close to that $100,000 mark, which would require DCAM certification. 10% would be 99. 99. 90, awesome. 99, but but you know, a little bit of wiggle room you do there. So you may ch decide to change the bid again. It would be uh, appropriate to push the deadline back yet again in order to give bidders sufficient time to uh, uh, prepare a bid. For How many people at the bidders meeting? Um, I can't recall. Two. So can I just ask, I mean, recognizing... So let, let, let yeah. me just give the, the full mm -hmm. picture. Uh, one of the things that you want to avoid is a bid protest. So if you've designated something that is not requiring DCAM certification, and yet it really did, if all your bids came in high, or if even some of your bidders came in high, uh, and uh, felt that there was some sort of unfair practice, then you might have uh, a bid protest, which you will then have to resolve. Okay. So I'm, I'm done. <laughs> As an elected official in town of Hadley, I think we are obligated to do the best that we can for the citizens. If we have a legitimate bidder who has done work for us in the past, who has told us specifically that he's going to after reviewing everything, that the number is going to be below a DCAM certification, I, I would strongly urge that we do the best thing for the citizens of Hadley. Yeah. Whatever we need to do on the end for the communication, there's two bidders. I'm, I'm sorry, there's not two bidders. There's two people that uh, showed an interest in the bidding on the project. Whatever we need to do to do it properly and get to them, I don't really want to put this back any further than we have to. But if, if you know you don't know how many people asked for the package, we do have that information there. But I mean, it's, it's not. How many tell me, it's not forty. It's not forty. Okay, so so it's not a monumental task that we're asking to have done here, correct? Can I ask my question? Oh, I, I was almost done with mine, but if you want to interrupt, that'd be fine. Well, it does because you interrupted me. You took it away. I'm taking it back. Yes, ma'am. Um, so the question I was going to ask previously, when David was finished, is just from just making sure we have all the facts in front of us recognizing that the DCAM process was created for a reason, right? It was. So, you know, and that there was a change and they, they came with this $100,000 threshold. Um, I'm sure it was to ensure that there were no um, shenanigans, so to speak, going on in local municipalities or any, any governing body um, with skid greasing, so to speak. And that, you know, we have this $100,000 rule in front of us um, and people have to go through a process to become DCAM certified vendors, correct? So correct. they have to. Um, so my question is just simply to the extent that we might be hiring a vendor that's not DCAM certified, I, can I presume that we would still put that vendor through a rigor to ensure that they're going to provide quality services? So we're, we're not. We're not foregoing any sort of um, quality testing or reference checking or anything. We will still do due diligence exactly and we'd they'd be yes. bonded and all yeah. of that. Exactly. That's true. But the specifications were written such that certain qualifications you know, have to be met in order for that roofer to perform correctly. Okay. I just say again, I think it's an important yeah. thing to make clear that they were not looking to forego any sort of safety or, or soundness. So I'm throwing it back to you, Jerry. Sorry. No, I'm going to answer all my questions. One at a time, you finish. Yeah. You're all done? Molly, right. Molly got all my, <laughs> okay. the, what I was most concerned about with was the bonding to make sure that, okay. that we're still going to be taken care of. Okay. If I You're, could also add, oh, sorry, Joyce. Uh, go ahead. That 
generally roofing is more almost a commodity. I mean, honestly, the roofing, the roofing prices are going to be very close. A ten percent swing one way or the other, in my experience, is a little a little uh, unique. I, th I think we'll see them tighter than that. So. To, to set a limit at 10% above a bid that we can Certainly you've bid. seen enough with the buildings that you've done. Exactly. It, I mean, it, it wasn't like the as, asbestos abatement where we waited two years now and the, the price of, of, of the process has just gone up that much, you know. It's the, the roof, like you said, it's, it's more of a maintenance issue, not a... Oh, <coughs> the, the roof is prices go based on the price of steel. I mean, there's trends in the in the marketplace that do affect the prices generally, but mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see that much of a swing from this from this bid that we have as a base to a 10% plus from that. Gary? One example is we just did the uh, flat roof at the senior center. The difference between the lowest bid and the next one was $500. It's pretty tight. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a competitive market, so they're going to exactly. And, and once you get into that DKM certified, it could cost the town more. Back to Jerry's point, where we don't have a, we don't have a lot of money to begin with, and we need to spend the taxpayers' dollars quite. So at town meeting, we approved three hundred five thousand dollars. Three hundred five thousand dollars, and then the voters approved that at the ballot. Okay. And they have to approve it at the ballot. No, it's already been done. It's done. Mm -hmm. We're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can go forward. All right, so we do, do we want to push back the date for the, um, I said of May 19th, do we want to push back the date? So the process, the process, if I'm hearing the board correctly, would, would result in me crafting addendum number three, which would uh, change the menu option so that bidders could bid on one, two, or three roofs. If they bid on the town hall roof, they don't need DCAM certification. If they choose to bid on only the... Uh, How about it generically, it just says if you're under $100,000. If your bid is under $100,000, then it doesn't have to be DCAMP certified bidder. No. Let, me, let me talk this out so that there aren't any hurt feelings at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. So if people do choose to do two roofs, that's DCAMP. There's no combination here that keeps you under 100000 Public safety. So if you do if you do town hall that's sixty five if you do the if you do the uh, DPW that's ninety yeah. you're at you're at one hundred and fifty five. So you would have to be DCAM. No, I would set them up as three individual projects. Three individual bids. All right. So what we need to. Do In the best interest of the town, we regret to inform you folks that this is the way we're going to need a bid. Well, let, let, I want to hear what David is saying. saying the process has to be. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. I think the cleanest way to do this would be to cancel the bid, rebid it, three projects separately. Mm -hmm. I think that's the cleanest way of doing it. Agreed. Agreed. That's okay. All right. Everybody agree? Yeah. I can't. I can't see. I can't s see us not getting into trouble. Uh, short of that. Okay. So here are your two options. Okay. Two roofs, no matter what they are, decamp. You're above the hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. You got sixty-five, ninety, and one hundred and fifty. Right. No combination gets you below. Mm -hmm. No combination of two gets you below that. All right, you can do one roof uh, without DCAM. You can do separately another roof without DCAM, but the, the same person can't be doing that. Mm -hmm. so, I, I don't, I'm not following you. If right. I am, if it, I have bid number A, bid number B, and B, bid number C. They could bid on all one. One person could bid on all three. C of them. is definitely DCAM because it's above a hundred thousand right. dollars as an individual project. Right. right. The other two projects, as long as B is bid at under a hundred thousand dollars they can bid on that one they can also bid on project a individually so long as that doesn't trigger with b a hundred thousand so if you get but are see, they so it's not, it's not driven by the building its physical location it's driven by what's within the bid documents all right so the requirements of the bid documents have, 
cannot exceed one hundred thousand dollars <laughs> if you're going to um, if you're going to uh, avoid the DCAM certification process. Simply bid them three individual projects. Three then. individual projects. Yeah. Cancel. Right. Cancel, Cancel this out and do each one separately. I'm correct on what the sheets that I have from Yale. Each that money is uh, each roof is in its own line item for each building. Right. So. So it's separate anyway. They're separate. Right. So if one comes in higher than what we have in that line item, we can't can't do it anyway because we can't take one from well, like the leftovers from one and put it towards another. Right. Right. My recommendation to cancel the bid, restart. Well, I'd like to make a motion then to accept David's recommendation that we cancel the bid and rebid these projects separately. Individually. Um, and I, it, it separate, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, that um, we do it as expeditiously as possible given the, and we want to keep this moving. Can, can I? I mean, we could probably wait, move it out to May 30th. I have a motion on the table. Yes, right. We need a second for second. discussion. All right. Discussion. For discussion, it's just canceling, right? You're canceling, canceling the bid. We're going to have to start over again. Okay, that's what the motion is on for. Uh -huh. But and, and to rebid separately as discussed, as yeah. expeditiously no, as possible. Yeah. I'll second that motion. So Mike. if one person bids on two of the roofs, that makes it decamp. No. Certifiable. No. no. They're, they're separate contracts. They're separate, they're separate contracts. contracts. They're separate. If it's the same person that gets the The bid. same person can bid on all four projects. Okay. If a garage door guy was to bid on garage doors in Springfield and they had 10 different stations, mm -hmm. if they bid them out individually, is what the way I'm looking at it. Okay. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I just ask a question before these guys leave? The RF, the RFI, the whole RFP, RFI, where do we, where do we stand with that right now? The RFI is due back on uh, um, May 18th. May 18th? Yeah. Okay. So and next then, Monday. Then what happens with it at that point? It comes uh, present, I present the results to the select board. So uh, at the meeting of the 20th, we'd be? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a strategy session, so the 3rd of June. We could do informational too, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, give, so, I'll give it I mean, to you however you want it. Yeah. Would it be your Let preference for us to see that sooner rather than later? The RFI? Whenever we can get it? Yeah, as soon as possible. So if we can add that to the 20th meeting? Then? Sure. You guys okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, we do also want to just update you on the consultant selection process. Uh, you may have heard last week we did interview the final candidates for the consultant, the architectural engineering consultant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Devine, for filling in uh, for Mr. Westgate. Yeah, it all worked out very well seamlessly. Thank you. Um, much appreciated. So we, we do have a unanimous selection for that candidate and are currently checking the references for them. So uh, we have yet to hear back from I have, everybody. I checked three of the four references for the number one and they all been excellent. Okay. Getting very right. close. So the next step would be for us to make a formal recommendation to you as the select board. Mm -hmm. Sure. We can we do that in your next board meeting. Sure. The 20th is our, we're doing like a retreat type of thing and trying to catch up on some things that we need to. <coughs> I think that's um, important enough to put on there. It's only going to take a minute. We don't have to interview them. No. We don't. They we already just, did. We have to I know, but normally we do bring the candidates in when there's been a recommendation to us for this type, for any type of position. Well. So, I mean, that's, you know, the normal process that we they, usually have. They've already But I thought we talked to... Yeah. I didn't, know, but we've done that for every other position. Yeah, but, but I'm just thinking... Not saying that we, we will, but... Yeah, I remember there was some discussion on that and didn't... Because I remember Guilford talking about that, and I, I thought that what we agreed to was that we would kind of get to this point in the process and then we would decide whether or not it was necessary because in the past we haven't okay. really had this type of committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way it was kind of written up, I believe, and David, we, we 
this one person did send in a figure with that. We declined to open that. We were going to pick the number one choice, number two, and number three, and then it was up to you guys to negotiate a price with you know number one. If that didn't work, then that was the way I understood. It. So we were going to have to have some type of interview with right, these but, people. And that's discussing price, so you have to decide on what what your members would sit down with them and what's in the budget for this work that out did 50. Did, i'm sorry 50. did we even request the price of what was it hourly rates we did not we did not so yeah that you were just i thought it was just hour, i thought it was just hour, hourly rates because it was a as needed basis it is right i mean if and we have a project on what it is, is it could be a different rate that's what we were discussing at one time I mean, if you have to give them a call for one thing, it might be you know an hourly rate, or if you had a small project, then I'm sure they would probably give you a, a price, or you can tell them a price that you want to stay within for that project. Generally, it'd be the build it, the billable rates for the classifications. Right. So, project manager, engineer, architect. So then, possibly you could bring us the names next next week on the twentieth, and then we would make that decision on the board how to proceed with those names. Do it that way. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you Happy for yours. Happy Memorial Day. Well, that's next week. We'll see you before that. I'm jumping. You can join us for the parade, building committee. Yeah, you're official. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take a smaller, right? Somebody's gonna you watch gotta, it. You gotta float <laughs> your cars and get in the car. Sorry, nobody's in it, nobody's watching. Um, all right, so let's do three first. Uh, acting DPW director, vote on appointment of Mr. Klamoski. Why, what's the status of the search committee? Well, we're gonna do that after we appoint Mike. Why, why are we wasting time? We've been out this for two we're months going, now. No, we're, we're just going to order. tonight. Just sit tight for a minute. I'm taking things in a different order. She's just kicking it. Different I'm taking it so that we appoint Mr. Klamoski first, since he's been that we vote. gracious enough that to we vote. Do we vote? Yeah. So, is there um, a motion okay. on the table, or let me just uh, say where we are? Mm -hmm. um, we have a, an agreement that uh, we showed you the. The outline of at the just prior to the town meeting, we had it reviewed by council. Council made just a very small change. Uh, we've reviewed it with Mr. Klamowski. He's agreeable to it. Uh, he is giving you a price, which is uh, $80,000 per year. We have the money in the budget for both FY15 and 16 for as long as you need it. Uh, we have the contract here, which Mr. Klamowski has signed. Could you highlight the change recommended by the council? Uh, in the term of the, uh, on the front, front page of it, under term, yep. third sentence, the acting director of public work shall be assigned at will, that's new yep. position, mm -hmm. yep. um, and his assignment may be shortened at the sole discretion of the select board. Oh, good. Yeah, those, so are good only, yeah. those are the only two changes that the council made. Okay. We have uh, agreed upon, uh, if you've agreed upon the rate of $80,000 per year, then that would work out in compensation to a gross weekly salary of $1,532.57. Mm -hmm. Which I'm happy to report is higher than what we're paying you right now. Um, I'd like to make a motion that the select board um, enter into an employment agreement with Mike Klamowski. Uh, the agreement is presented and modified by town council mm -hmm. for the position of acting DPW director, effective immediately. Mm -hmm. I'd like to second that. Any further discussion? Yeah, so that's a $7,000 raise? Yes. On top of the roughly $500,000 we spent in the last five years? Is that correct for the past DPW director? We didn't spend $500,000. Oh, I think you better look at his salary. Well, this is now. Well, so $7,000 more for active DPW. You've got DPW. applicants. 
you've got enough of people to put a committee together. We are to putting to that a committee together in just a moment. I we mean, are now having an acting. Facts, we, ha we are having an acting DPW director right now. Motion is on the table. And it's seconded. And it's seconded. Is there any further discussion besides the money? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thank you, Mike. Very <laughs> welcome. <laughs> how many are you? 30, how many? Seven? 40. 40? Thank you. I'm 45 in the hospital. I got to be. <laughs> 45. I didn't even know you were 45 years old. Thank you. You're very <laughs> kind this evening. All right. So then we'll now go back to number two, DPW Director Search Committee. And we will be putting together uh, the committee, which will be a person from each uh, department at the DPW, that will be highway, water, and sewer. And we have an outside consultant that has been um, brought to us by Mr. Mooring. We will also add a community member, two select board members, and uh, it will be a total of seven uh, people working on the committee. So for the um, DPW, we have Gary Burke, part of the Highway Department, Isaac Golding um, as um, the Sir. Sewer Department, and Bruce Merriam for the Water Department. We have Mike Warble of Long Meadow that will serve as a uh, consultant type of person. He is a DPW person for Long Meadow. And then we have um, Molly and Guilford that are, uh, I think or Jerry, Jerry right? Jerry's yeah. doing it. Molly and Jerry will be on the committee. And so now we have the task of um, selecting a town person. We have in the running uh, Harry Barstow. We have uh, Sharon Gifford, but she does not live here in town. Uh, we have uh, William Denlinko. And we have Teresa Wong Neihart. And we also have um, John Michkowski that um, had submitted his letter before, but it's not in the package today. Where is it? Do you have a consultant? I don't have anything. It's not in the, it's, it's what uh, Guilford told me uh, yesterday. He, when we, last meeting too. he okay. mentioned it at the last yeah. meeting that he would have a name for us. So that is the name. Okay. Mike Warble. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just didn't see it in there. Yes. He confirmed that yesterday at, uh, when we were doing negotiations. So, those are the people that we have that are available. We need to choose one. So, if anybody would like to make a motion, I'll make or a motion have a for. Uh, I'd like to make a motion for Harry Barstow and Mrs. Myhart. I think we only have, we have one, one opening. Yeah. We could do a alternate. Alternate. As oh, we okay. did, have, as we have done on other yeah. committees. Yeah, for the clarity of the record, uh, uh, should that motion come from uh, from you? Perhaps somebody not on the DPW? Yeah. Oh. Just excellent, say. excellent Just idea. Say. I, I, I would like to make a motion. <laughs> well, yeah, that's You're right. On the <laughs> Good on the You're on the committee. I extend that's why last she time. can't make the motion. Yes, I forgot this time. Yes. <laughs> on the search committee. I'll recruit myself as the uh, chair for tonight and I will make the motion to um, ask Harry Barstow to serve on the DPW committee with Teresa Neidhart as the alternate. You're going to need a second, aren't you? Oh. I already tried it. Yeah. I, <laughs> I will second that. Any discussion? I, I just, you know, I like to be fair and just articulate the thought process here. Um, I mean, we have excellent candidates. We have, and we also have people who've been extremely participative in town. Uh -huh. um, you know, Willie and, and Johnny, honestly, they, they do an awful lot already. 
Um, Johnny clearly has a tremendous amount of experience in the DPW, but you know he's currently on the planning board and, um, and pretty engaged. And I don't believe that Hank has done anything so recent. of recent. And um, the alternate, I, I like the fact that she's a civil engineer um, because that's I think going to be a big top the engineering aspects of the position are going to be talked about a lot. And it would be nice to have somebody who's um, learned and familiar with that. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to articulate that. Thank you. Motion is on the table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Upstate. I remember. Thank you. <laughs> Could we send letters to those that did uh, offer themselves? Thank you. Number six, debt exclusion ballot date, follow up from annual town meeting. So we're passing over five because um, they're not here they're this not evening. Here. They're not coming. They're unable to join us. They've contacted us directly, right? Right. Correctly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So number six. So we had town meeting. It was a <coughs> success. We finished in two hours and twenty minutes, and um, came down to that we have some debt exclusion votes that will need to be done. And the time frame on that, David, is? Um, so we have a motion prepared for you uh, that uh, uh, I have the wrong date here, did I? You do. You got January 6th. That's why I okay. was confused. So It'll be June 23rd. Be, mm, yeah, that'll be June 23rd. I don't want to go back to January. Thank you, yeah. anyway. June 23rd, uh, polling hours of uh, 12 noon to 8 p.m. And place on the ballot the following question. Shall the town of Hadley be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase a school bus for the school department, yes, no. Shall the town of Hadley be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to purchase a cruiser for the police department, yes, no. Should we not have numbers in there? You can't have numbers in there. Mm -hmm. These, the form of the question is dictated by the Department of Revenue. We can provide that information as often as possible in advance of it. I think we've done that with other right, but uh -huh. but not in the not in the official ballot. You can't put the numbers in. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion. The, the the numbers happen to be sixty five thousand for the school bus and forty two thousand for the police cruiser. Uh, June twenty third. Okay. I'll make a motion that we ex uh, we. Is the motion to accept? So moved. Okay. <laughs> I will second that. What and for discussion, for if discussion. I could ask for the second number again, please. Sixty-five is for the bus. Forty-two. Um, you can get an absentee ballot for a special. Yes, you may. Okay. I believe you may. Yeah, I'm not sure. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you to all that joined us at town meeting this year. One hundred and forty-four. Forty-four. All right. We have a resignation from Linda Harris from the um, Historical Commission, and she has been on it for the last five years. We'd like to take this time to thank her for her service and wish her well. Um, so we, there are now three members of the Conservation Commission, and I'm ready to put my efforts elsewhere is what Linda Harris wrote to us. So thank you very much for your time and service. And um, sent her a letter also of thanks. And we will need to post a position on uh, anybody, interested, anybody in interested in serving on the Historical Commission. Two. Two. And I think there's two. Two, because someone else just. Claire Carlson. Carlson, yes, thank you. 
we have a Mass Department of Agricultural APR 120 day notice of paperwork. And this for is for the Heron Farm Trust. So there are three general properties, clusters of properties. The first one is for the Heron Trust, and the next two are for the Kulikowski family. Uh, we have to do uh, the notice of the state's interest in acquisition for each of the parcels. And then the board is uh, asked to um, to waive the 120-day waiting period uh, required by law. These were the properties that we did at town meeting. Right. These are the properties that we did at town meeting under the, uh, the Community Preservation Act. Okay, Chester Kulikowski's property and the Heron property. So, all those in favor of signing this are making a motion, I guess, first. I would be in favor of signing those. I would like to so move. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Is it convenient and easy to give the locations for us? Or not really? Where Kulikowski's property is. I thought it was on Spruce Hill. Spruce Hill. Oh, Rocky Hill Road. Yeah, Rocky Hill Road. Yeah, that's that one we were trying to figure out. So Kulikowski property on Rocky Hill Road. And the Pyramid property on Shattuck Road. Nope, Spruce Hill also. Well, that's just the part that says you have to read it, you have to read that. The sticky note that says you have to read. Oh, read. You have to read. Oh, read. You have to read. oh okay. Let's read. Uh, mm -hmm. In compliance with the GLC 7C Section 37, the Commonwealth acting by and through its Department of Agriculture Resources, the Department, hereby gives notice that it purposes to acquire an agricultural preservation restriction on the real property identified herein for the purpose of protecting in perpetuity, perpetuity its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their conversion to other use. The application received by the MDAR indicates that the property is owned by a state of Chester F. Kulikowski and consists of partial located at Spruce Hill Road. As approximately represented on the attached map, the APR may be encompass all parts of the area shown. The current use of the property is primarily for vegetable production. Following the recording of the APR, the use of the subject property is limited to agricultural use as more particularly set forth in the APR document, the General Laws, Chapter 184, Section 31, and the regulations of the Department 330 CMR 22 at, at SEC. So cool. at, okay. I'm supposed to read it for each one. Okay, each one. Okay, so, so, so that would be for the other Kulikowski property, and that would be for the Heron. Okay, so we can get it that way. All right, I think All right, we're good. good. We can do it that way. All right. Yeah, that worked good. So I don't need to do Kulikowski. No, we just need the three. Three. So, this one here. Uh, in compliance with the GLC 7C Section 37, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts acting by and through its Department of Agricultural Resources hereby give notice that it proposes to acquire an agricultural peace preservation restriction on the real property identified herein for the purpose of protecting in perpetuity its superior and productive agricultural resources by preventing their conversion to other use. The application received by MDAR indicates that the property is owned by the Heron Nominee Trust and consists of partial located at Lawrence Plain Road as approximately represented on the attached map. The APR may encompass all parts of the area shown. The current use of the property is primarily for vegetable production. 
And following the recording of the APR, the use of subject property is limited to agricultural use as more particularly set forth in the APR document. The General Laws, Chapter 184, Section 31, and the regulations of the department. Any other Kulikowski ones, Rocky Hill and Huntington? Yes. <laughs> We have something else, Mike, tonight? Oh, nope. good. Okay. We have the Memorial Day Parade. And that is set for Sunday, May 24th, 2015. Uh, we will all meet. I hope the everyone will join us. Um, everyone is invited to come, elected officials and people on committees. Uh, we will meet at the Legion at 1045 to do the rounds of the cemetery. Um, and then we will meet back um, 2 o'clock for the um, Route 9 parade, with floats and flag raising at the Legion. Uh, there's also the North Hadley Cemetery, which is at 1.10 p.m., and the Most Holy Redeemer Cemetery at 1240, where the bands and Girl Scouts will be. Return to the Legion after the parade, going down to the Hooker Monument, uh, and there, everybody's invited back for refreshments, participants and uh, viewers. So if you're going to come, uh, please notify town officials. Meet at front of Legion. Town clubs and organizations meet in the Legion parking lot. Vehicles and floats, please enter through Hooker School lot and meet in field. So everyone can contact, um, we have uh, John Karras, uh, we have um, Jean Baxter, and uh, Kathy Zaturka. Park and Rec. Huh? Park and Rec. So if you would like to participate, just contact one of those people. Maybe. Tom Stolarski, oh, yeah, the yeah. Legion itself, Tom Baxter. Oh yeah, here we go, mm -hmm. the Legion. Can we, is that up on uh, Channel 5, Rich? Not yet. Okay, it's going to be though? With their numbers so they can be contacted? Uh, I usually don't put up the, I just put up the schedule. Okay. All right. All right. So everybody come out and join us. It's a great day. Hopefully we'll have good weather. Um, can I sit next to you on the bus, Joyce? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> we'll have fun. Um, Request for appropriation fund transfer from workman's comp to debt interest. That's number four. Okay, so we uh, didn't have quite enough money in the account to cover our interest payments on our debt. It's a matter of $1,200 and change that uh, we still need to raise. The last two months of the fiscal year, you can transfer from one line item to the other with certain parameters. So we're uh, suggesting that we uh, transfer uh, the amount needed uh, from the workers' comp line, which has $25,000 in it, to cover the debt and interest payment. Uh, and this needs a, a vote of the Finance Committee as well. Was this recommended by the Finance Committee? No. It's going to the Finance Committee. So yes. 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 So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Number five, we have a pilot. Solar City Corporation vote on payment in lieu of taxes agreement. Okay, so number five and number six, we're still waiting for town council to give his approval of the uh, documents. So whatever action you take tonight, I, I recommend that you uh, do it um, uh, contingent upon any uh, changes suggested by town council. The pilot for Solar City Corporation is the follow-up on the town meeting vote that we just did. This is the corporation that's developing the solar field in the town of Hadley that will be associated with uh, with uh, Hampshire College, uh, and it's located off of Bay Road, off off of um, 
uh, Maple Street. Uh, we have negotiated with through the assessor's office a pilot payment of ten thousand dollars per megawatt for a two megawatt facility with a two percent escalator clause for twenty years, which will result in the long run for the town of Hadley more uh, personal property taxes than if we did a 20-year agreement at straight taxes. Helps the corporation out by uh, helping them with their cash flow management, and it adds to the town of Hadley certain protections for the collection of personal property taxes that we currently don't normally have in these kinds of uh, agreements. The land itself it will be taxed separately as real estate, so we'll be receiving two payments from uh, this, uh, this deal. The money for the pilot will show up as new growth, so the new growth figure that we have in our budget estimates for FY16 includes the $20,000 payment from Solar City. This, in, in addition to town meeting vote and select board vote, this is also needs approval from the Department of Revenue, which would be the next step. And this is similar to the other this, two or three we got right now? This will be our fourth one, and they're all cookie cutters at this point. Okay. Any uh, questions? Or we need to take a vote. Yes, you need to take a vote. Uh, subject to any legal changes. Is it just on five and five or six, or are they separate? Well, we talk about them separately. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the agreement as presented, subject to legal review. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And number six, <coughs> net metering credit agreement. Next app, vote on solar credits to offset electricity changes. So a little bit of history here. This uh, is potentially our second net metering credit agreement with Nexamp for solar development on Rocky on uh, Mill Valley Road. Uh, the first one we negotiated a, a couple of years ago. Uh, was under the SREC-1 um, uh, Renewable Energy Credit uh, Program. That program has since expired and has been replaced with the SREC-2 program. So the SREC-2 program governs this particular net metering credit agreement. So basically, in a nutshell, we have a solar field which is developed, which is producing electricity. In exchange for feeding electricity into the grid, uh, Bamiko and now Eversource will give a coupon to the uh, solar field in order to apply that to their electricity bill. Well, they don't have electricity bill, so the coupon is worthless to them. So they resell this on the market at a discount. The one that we currently have with uh, Nexamp is uh, under the SREC 1 program is for a 21% discount for electricity which covers 70% of our load that's trapped into five buildings. It's the two schools, the two treatment plants, and the police station, the fire public safety complex. Those collectively represent 70% of our entire electricity usage. And just to give you a sense of the magnitude, we spend a quarter of a million dollars annually on electricity in the town of Hadley. So we're seeing 21% discounts on the energy portion of those bills. Remember, under deregulation, electricity bills are broken into three parts, the energy generation distribution, uh, uh, transmission distribution generation. Um, this particular agreement is for a 16% discount for the remaining 30% of our electricity. So that would be uh, the buildings that are not currently covered, uh, that would be Town Hall, that would be DPW, not the uh, water tr uh, wastewater treatment plant part of it. That would be the library, um, that would be the senior center. That would include the sewer pump stations and potentially could con uh, cover our street lights and traffic lights. And so if we agree to this, we would have most, um, almost 100% of our energy load covered by solar. We would be able to say that we are pretty green as it gets. Um, is there a cap on it or no? Uh, in a cap? Yeah. There is no upper cap, but there is a ceiling cap. So if the electricity prices for some reason in the market were to drop, 
and that ceiling would be about six cents per kilowatt hour. And just to give you some perspective, we're paying 11.63 cents per kilowatt hour under a, a, a fixed price contract, which is far below market rate. So we would be guaranteed at least uh, a credit off of six cents per kilowatt hour so that we would not be in a negative credit situation if the price is dropped, which nobody foresees them doing, uh, certainly not to that level. I don't think we're ever going to see six cents per kilowatt hour uh, ever again. But I know it was questionable when we were going through that Hampshire County bid mm -hmm. with, with that portion of it. Mm -hmm. So there would be there would be protections built in so that you would have a floor, not necessarily a ceiling. So 30% uh, of our load would translate into $93,000 annually of costs, and we would be receiving uh, a, a portion of that. 85% uh, of that would be subject to the 16% discount. So it's about 12, over $12,000 per year? About $12,000 per year but over wrong. a 20-year period. But it actually grows during that 20-year period based on their estimate of... Based upon inf yeah, inflation yeah. inflation yeah. estimate of 3% for web resource mm -hmm. uh, electricity rates. Mm -hmm. So I would say I would say the $300,000 uh, figure that they're given there, I would look at that as an upper range. Mm -hmm. And ballparking it, I would say we would save the town of Hadley about a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand over a twenty-year period. Is there any reason not to? That you can see? Only if we see some major, major change in um, two things: either the energy world, if we thought that if the energy world was going to change dramatically with some sort of new technology coming in that would suddenly make electricity obsolete. I just don't see anything like that happening but we live in a fast-paced world. Uh, the other um, would be if you were uh, in the future very aggressive about energy conservation and you decided to reduce your load, um, then this, uh, this agreement would work against you. So if you decided to reduce your overall energy consumption by a factor of 20%, uh, you might be in a situation where this is not working so well for you, but we're talking about eliminations of, of buildings, um, elimination of fleet of uh, pumping stations, uh, the treatment plants. I mean, I just don't see that kind of savings coming through for the town. Uh, so we're, we're locked in once we agree? You would be locked in once you agree. There's no way out. Um, I can explore that with the uh, with the council. There, you would you would be locked in if uh, you would be able to get out if there was sort of some sort of drop in the market below the six percent. And, and I remember asking this question the last time on one of the last ones we did was if we were to solar panel Hopkins Academy, how would that affect us? And uh, originally, I remember when Jeff Rogers was here, he, he said not not enough to affect the. The outcome of this over a 20 right. year period. Right. I make a motion we hold the vote on that this evening. I, I just want to understand that a little better and I have a bunch of questions. I, yeah. I just don't have answers. If it that's my, my motion. Okay. Uh, you want me to second Jerry's motion? Yeah. Okay, second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Until we get some more. Yeah. Just a little bit more information. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 quite a Quite a cobweb to, mm -hmm. to pull apart. I need some splinting on that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So last but not least, we have select board meeting topics for May 20th. So let's uh, go down the line. We'll start with Molly. What would you like to see on the agenda? Um, so what I'm working on right now is um, my intent is to bring to this meeting an outline for a proposed um, kind of strategic planning slash budget calendar. Um, I already started working on that and I, I can tell you that included in there are kind of some major major areas of um, I, where I think we could make improvement or areas of concern, whatever you want to call it. So one part of that is communication. Um, I'd like to spend some time just talking about communication between departments, town administrator, town administrator, select board, select board, other committees, etc. So kind of 
that piece of it. Um, the budget uh, calendar and in there incorporating how we get information from uh, department heads and make sure that we're getting good information in order to set goals and objectives up front. So at any rate, I, you know, my intent is to provide everybody with, it'll be a draft document obviously um, in advance of the May 20th meeting so that we would have the opportunity to maybe use that a, as a bit of a guidepost for a portion of the meeting. That's all. That's it? Yeah. Okay. John? Um, are we going to be able to get these bids out, David, for the roofs? By the end of the month, no. Yes, if we were to maybe turned her out. The, the oh, the canceled and then the, the canceled and the and the rebid. We never really discussed a date on that, but we should bring it up by next by next meeting, hopefully. Well, the, the motion said expeditious. It. Yeah. So. Well, I have to cancel the bid right away because the deadline for the bids is Tuesday, so I'll get that information out to everybody. Um, the, uh, the the repackaging of, of the uh, technical specifications I have to work with David Tudrin on, but as soon as well, that's done, I mean they all got to they're not going to change. They just have to be separated, really. I mean the specs are all going to be there. Sorry. So within the next week, maybe. What, what, what action are you hoping to have? Well, I, I, I mean, I, just, I already expect to send this out, so... You know, with the, town, for, with the town hall going on, but I, I don't want to run into fall time and into the winter with this, you know? No, no, you're going to put out that RFP yeah. now, right? Right, I'm going to work on it right away. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, well, once you cancel the other one, the other one will try to get into effect as soon as possible. Meeting? I think that's what they would open them up at the next meeting. He said yeah, he would I, bring have, I have a month. I have a month of the oh, okay. agenda. Mm -hmm. So I've got the architect, and I've got the RFI, and I've got uh, Molly's right. uh, budget. I, I had I had gone over the three architects, and I I really had not spoke to Jerry. And you you made it to the meeting. I did. I did speak to a couple of the other members, so they're they're pretty satisfied with with the choice there they're going to recommend to us. So. It was a unanimous choice on yeah. not only one, but one, two, and three. <clears throat> okay. okay. Good. Okay. So that should be pretty cut and dry, too. Okay. I would like to echo Molly's concerns, and I'm glad she's working on it, because I think we need to do a better job with the budget. We, you know, we got how many phone calls do we get from angry people this year about numbers being changed or budgets not being right? And I'm, I'm almost to the point where I'm thinking we should change our date for town meeting because it's just too difficult to not have any feedback or enough feedback from the state so that we can bring a legitimate budget before everybody. I mean, at this point in time, we've gone to town meeting, we've made budget concerns based on our original cherry sheet, but you know, we, we really have no idea where that's coming in. And it's stress, I, I know, and you've been doing it for 30 years, but yeah. back to the school but, committee. But, it, but it's, it's like the numbers are fluid. They're, they change consistently all the time, so it's kind of hard to really pinpoint it on that end. It's not so hard to have people pinpoint what they expect in their budget, but that's not always going to be what they're going to get in their budget. I couldn't agree with you more. I just think that we need to be, um, it is, is. It's like a shoot, moving target. It is. All right, so that's, I, I, I like know, and it shouldn't be that way. Well, that's, that's, it is, I though. agree with Jerry, you know. It, I'm blaming the state, not being here. In a past, yeah, you know, state, not us, it's, a, except it's the state. The, <laughs> yeah, it's always a complaint every year at the uh, it conferences. Is. But I see many, many communities now that are talking about their budgets, and because they, have, they haven't had town meeting or their town meeting's not as early as ours, that it allows them the Senate's now come back. So we had the House that came out, what, the day before our last meeting? So not only 
do we, we have new numbers from the morning to the afternoon, which again, frustrates the heck out of everybody. Not only us, but now we have between us and the finance committee, and now commitments that were made to other people, you know, with department heads, and it's just, it, it's a flawed process that I really, I don't have an answer, but I'd like to see if we could work on it and get the department heads involved and, and you know, figure this out. Last time I was in the seat, it seemed like what we did was made our best guess and we went to fall town meeting to make all the, the changes that we needed to after the budgets were finalized and the governor's budget was signed. So I mean, I, I don't know how to do that or how to be better communicative with that, but I think we need to work on that. And hence Molly's, so I completely agree with, with you on that. I'd like to see a, the assignments of the liaisons, please just. That's what um, we're doing. You know, that would be, that would be a, a help. Well, not just the assignment, too. I mean, I, I think also we really need to clarify the role to make so effectiveness in terms of, you know, expectations. Uh, if we're going to continue with liaison positions, you know, accountability relative to those roles, too. Mm -hmm. So that would be a good discussion. And I want to bring all the department heads in uh, with all the members of the select board and David and everybody else, and let's just sit in the room and have a little bit of a brainstorming so that I think that we need to, to mend some fences and to work a lot harder to pull in the same direction for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to see anybody frustrated, uh, any more frustrated than they have to be with not only the budget process, but with everything else that's going on. Let's, let's get everybody in the same room so that everybody understands that there's there's not fiefdoms here. This is a town that we're working on running the best that we can with the limited monies that we have. It's been done before, and I think it goes a long way towards, towards uh, allowing people to sit in a room. We get a lot of different committees. I didn't even realize we had a safety committee, but we have a lot of different committees, and I think that we all need to sit in a room once a year and, and kind of... Uh, uh, or more even. Oh, yeah, and, and just kind of you know air it out, and let's, let's hear, make sure everything's going the way that they want it to go. And if there's anything we can do, whether it's via communication, whether it's through emails or whatever it is, let's do, we get these volunteers out there, these, these fellows are working really hard and other people on other committees are working really hard. Whatever we can do to mend some of these fences, I think we need to do. I would like to see follow up on uh, topics. Um, I know where we stand, but we haven't really gone any further with uh, the sale of the Hadley, North Hadley Hall. Mm -hmm. We're still at a standstill with that from last year's town meeting, so I would like to see some resolution to that and move that forward even quicker. Um, I'm going to be bringing, I have a meeting on the 26th for the personnel policy, see if we can wrap that up. Mm -hmm. So that will be coming back after that, so that would be something we could talk about. Uh, we have asbestos bids that will be opening. So best asbestos bids, we have the uh, pre-bid conference today. Uh, the May 20th is the deadline for the filed sub-bids, and May 27th is the deadline for the general contractor. So what day, I'm sorry? May 20th will be the filed sub-bids, and May 27th will be the deadline for the general contractor. Both of those will be 2 p.m. in this room. So I will know at the end of the day on the 27th whether we have a, an affordable project or not. You must be looking forward to engineers, the uh, on-call engineers being able to help you with a lot of this stuff. Yes. And then we, I wanted to discuss again the uh, open concept of um, 15 minutes either before or at the end of the meeting for Citizen Public comments. comments. Citizen comments. Public yeah, good. And can discuss whether we want it at the beginning or at the end. Mm -hmm. Anything else? There should be plenty for that. I think it's going to be chock full. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. All right. Is there any other news? Anybody have any? No. Anything else tonight? Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. We talked about. Okay. Asparagus Festival we talked about. Yeah. It was um, Asparagus Day on the Hill, from what I understand, from our uh, state representative. So he, I believe, may have been in the vicinity of Plainville Farms and went off with some Hadley grass. Two cases of it was uh, distributed today. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, Any motion? Oh. I have for you the contract with Mr. Klamowski, and if I can get your signatures on the chapter 90, but you can take your vote to adjourn. Is there a second to adjourn? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.